Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. We've got a pretty big project today and uh, one I've been looking forward to since I first decided to come fix up this cabin and uh, that's putting up the chimney so I can start running the stove again. Um, as you know, it's been a cold past couple weeks up here and I've been relying on a little propane heater for all of my heat and my propane is running pretty low. It probably won't last too, too long. So hopefully I can finish it up in the next uh, day or so. And we'll have a working stove in here that can heat up the cabin no matter what the weather or temperature might be. So like I said, I've been looking forward to this a, a very long time. Uh, we have all the pieces. I've never done it before, but uh, I have a pretty good idea of how it all works. So. Uh, let's get right to it. Um, we have a beautiful day outside. It kind of looks like it might snow later. I've never set up a chimney before, but uh, I've read a few things on it and I think I should be able to manage. Um, uh, this might not be the final setup with the pieces I have, but uh, it should work for now. And you know, if I find a better way to do it, then I can change it later on. But uh, today, the goal is to get a working stove up and running and I think it's going to be fun. So let's get right at it. We have a lot of work to do and uh, yeah, let's start. Okay, so I think now I can just go outside and uh, pull this through uh, that way. I think that'd be better than trying to pull it through this way. Let's see if I can try and get this little screw off and take this piece off. Cause if anything, this is what's going to be, what's going to hold it. Although that's uh, quite stripped. Okay, let's head outside. So we're hoping to be able to use this top piece because it's in pretty good shape. So I'm gonna try detaching the uh, elbow from both of these pieces, pulling it off, and then see if I can pull this through the wall. And uh, hopefully those two pieces will be able to support it up there at least temporarily, but we'll see how it all goes. not sure if that's going to be doable because these are so rusted in there. I don't believe the pipes I have need any screws so it might be fine either way but we'll see. Well, that made a mess, but uh, the pipe's out, as you can see, and everything's pretty much good and ready for the second part. I'm gonna have to do some sweeping and vacuuming in here before we get to that, though.
right, so putting these together is probably the hardest part. I found that if you bend them out a little bit, a little bit down, you don't want to bend them too much just to keep the original shape as much as possible, but I think that should be enough. And then uh, you have to join them at a little lip, which I'll show you on the next one. And then kind of hold them together with your knees and push them along. And it usually slides in. There we go. There. And if you push down, you'll hear those cracks. And that's the rest of it sliding in. And it's good to go. Now you just want to make sure that uh, these aren't ovals and are circles, which you can do just by pressing them together. And then uh, that's one stovepipe done. That's the last one done. Awesome. And then we'll take these in here and just uh, see what it's what's going on. All right. So just by looking at this. definitely going to need two of these pipes going up yeah so as you can see that's not nearly high enough and uh, we're definitely going to need another one but that will be too long so we're gonna to have to cut one of these to let it fit up to this top one out here so we'll have to start measuring that and then uh, find out the best way to cut this thing yeah, so here you can see that two is obviously much too long. Probably have to cut it about here for the uh, elbow piece to be able to go through. And uh, I'm gonna have to be pretty exact with the measurements because uh, I don't have any extra pipes. So I'm gonna definitely have to make sure it's perfect before uh, I actually do any cutting.
street. All right, guys, so we got the first part of the chimney install finished. Uh, we've got it going out through the wall and down to the stove, and uh, it looks great. Everything fit together nicely. Luckily, some of the old fireproof rope um, that went around the old piece was still usable, so we hammered that in and all looks good. It's all sturdy, ready to go. Um, but we're gonna call it here for today because of the wind that's been picking up. It's uh, really quite windy and that's not very ideal conditions for setting up a tall chimney on the outside. So uh, yeah, we'll finish up the chimney tomorrow and hopefully we can get a nice fire going in here. But uh, I'll see you then. So it looks like we're going to have to use this piece uh, just to get it as high as we want it um, so that the chimney is as safe as possible. And uh, since it's raining pretty hard right now, which wouldn't be the best for setting up the chimney, I'm going to take this time to sand it down, get some of the rust off, and then I'll put some of the stove paste on it just so then, uh, you know, it's not as rusty, it will last longer, and also it'll just match the newer pipes better. So that's what I'm going to do right now while I wait for the rain to stop. like brand new and uh, it'll just match a lot better and of course it will uh, stay looking like this a lot longer if I just left it rusty then in a matter of uh, months it would be just like the ones I had to remove
be a bit for me. Yeah. Keep going. Down. Down. It's in there. Don't lean towards you at all. Alright. Looks good. It's just gotta come down about an inch. I'll hold up and you pull down and push down. Yeah, keep going. I can't really think. Okay, hold it right there, wait. I'll hit up. I think we're good. Starts it'll be easy. Alright, so we've got the whole chimney set up and now I'm going to light a little piece of birch bark or something just to see how it draws and uh, make sure it's safe and then I'll light a smaller fire and let that burn and then uh, just progressively work my way up just to make sure everything's okay. seems fine. What we're testing is to see if whatever I light in there goes out or not. And then also just to see if there's any leakage in the pipes, which uh, there doesn't seem to be. Just kindling for now. Well, it's all burning nicely, so I think I can start adding a few larger logs. Man, I can't think of a better time to have finished this project than right now. It's uh, a mix of rain and snow outside right now, and it's very cold, and I am very wet, so this is perfect timing.
This whole room just got so much cozier with the addition of a working stove. Man, I could just sit, you know, reading by the fire all day long. Um, what a difference. Just it being warm in here at night allows me to sit up and do stuff like that. Watch a movie or read a book without uh, freezing my butt off. As you guys probably remember a few weeks ago, um, I had layers upon layers of blankets just to stay warm. And basically all I could do in here was sleep because it was so cold. So I just bundle up and uh, you know just make it to morning. But now it is nice and warm and cozy. Sometimes it can almost be too hot. Right now it's just a perfect temperature, a pleasant temperature. And uh, man, I'm just so thankful to have that up and running now. It's made such a big difference to the cabin and it just feels a lot more like home now. And uh, I will also be putting in a new plexiglass window to replace the one that was broken. I'll be doing that uh, pretty soon here. And once that's in, this will be a fully winterized cabin. The only thing that really, because it's all insulated and it's all perfect for winter, except uh, before I put in the new chimney, there was just a gaping hole where the chimney pipe was. And um, that was just allowing so much cold air in that even when I ran the propane heater, the heat only lasted like 10 to 15 minutes. So I'd, I'd get it hot right before bed and then uh, try and fall asleep. And then also the window uh, was letting in a lot of cold air. I taped some more plastic over it, so it's pretty good right now but that's still letting it a bit. So once I get that plexiglass window, it could be, you know, as cold as it could be outside and uh, it wouldn't make one difference to me in here. And I really like that. Eventually, um, you know, I'll fix up the outside of the workshop as well so that uh, if I'm doing any sort of woodworking projects out there, even in the winter, I can just leave this door open and uh, heat up that room as well, so. Man, what a difference it makes. It's such an amazing thing you take for granted in a lot of modern homes that just have heating systems. And then uh, even once you've had one for a while, like in our family cabin, you don't really think about it much, but it is something that uh, is really special, especially when you're on a lake like this. So I'm really thankful to have that up. It was a lot of fun. I'd never done it before, but uh, it turned out nicely. Luckily, I was able to have my dad there as well to help with some of the heavier lifting and uh, just as an extra pair of hands, which was really nice. But um, some of you guys mentioned that uh, I need a T bracket on the outside. That way you can uh, dump like it's a right now outside. I have that elbow piece going straight up, but the T uh, goes straight up, but it's also got this bottom part with a little lid so you can clean out the chimney and empty it um, This is only temporarily how it's going to be eventually. I'm gonna get that t-bracket and uh, They just didn't have one at the store when I was there buying the pieces. So um, I'm gonna head into town pretty soon and do that and luckily I'll probably be able to head into town on our own boat because the ice has been breaking up very rapidly. I'm sure you guys saw in some of those scenes that uh, out of my cabin here, there's actually some water. Um, we're still locked in with ice. It's too early for a boat, but within the next couple of days, it should open up uh, enough where we can get a boat out and then uh, I can do trips into town freely, which I'm not gonna do too, too much because uh, I like being up here, <laughs> but it'll just be nice to be able to restock supplies um, sooner rather than uh, you know just getting everything for like two weeks and then being landlocked I'll actually be able to go out and do different things which will help me uh, continue on with all these projects and um, yeah it's just gonna be a lot of fun uh, just seeing that little body of water outside of my cabin made me super excited to go fishing uh, especially for trout I haven't had much luck with trout um, I haven't really known what I was doing in the past year or so. So this year I'm going to really dedicate some more time to fishing and try and learn just so I can become truly self-reliant, self-sufficient up here 
and be able to catch my own meals if need be. And uh, apparently once the ice has like just broken up is uh, some of the best time to go fishing. So that's definitely what I'm going to be doing in the upcoming weeks is doing a bit of fishing and see if I can catch something. And if I do and it's the proper size, I'd love to cook it. But uh, yeah, I think I'm going to go to bed. Lando has already started, as you can see. He's all bundled up and cozy. But uh, man, just super thankful, super excited. Like I said, it feels like a true cabin now. And it just got me that much more excited to do more projects around here. So I'm going to call it a night, go to bed, and then uh, we'll see what the morning has to bring. Thank you guys for watching this week's episode. Make sure you stay tuned for more progress on the cabin restoration coming up soon. And as always, a special thank you to those of you who have subscribed to my Patreon channel. Your support really means a lot and helps me to be able to keep doing what I love doing and bringing these videos to you guys. As always, I will see you guys next week.